to our first podcast, um, Brockton to Beacon Hill. I'm so excited to be here recording this podcast today. And um, it's our first one, so we hope that you provide feedbacks and let us know how we're doing. And this is Rita Mendes, your state representative, and I am so glad to be here just providing some updates and information to the Brockton residents and letting them know the exciting stuff that it's happening on Beacon Hill. So you hired me in November, so now I feel it's my chance and my opportunity to come back and just give you a brief report. But I want to warn you, we're just scratching the surface here. There's so much that it's happening on Beacon Hill that it's impossible, but we're going to be doing these podcasts on um, possibly a monthly basis, so that way we'll be providing more information as we go. So that's why I want to hear from you. Let me know how you think we're doing, what we should be improving on, and uh, different topics and things that you'd like to know more about. Definitely stay in touch, and I will let you know how you can stay in touch with us. But it's just so much fun, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's going to be a fun podcast, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Say hello, Maddie. Hi, my name is Maddie Donahue. I am Brett Mendez's legislative aide. I'm very excited to be here with her today and can't wait to hear from all of you. So she gets stuck with me to do all this amazing <laughs> stuff. So bear with us and she's going to tell you all the fun types of cases that she's working on since she's joined the legislature and the state house and um, maybe some of you out there dream of someday becoming an elected official. You can start as a legislative aide. Mm -hmm. So it's so much different things that you can do. And Maddie can tell you all the fun she has. It's not a boring job. She never knew what's <laughs> expecting for her each That's day. That's true. That is true. So are we ready to start on this podcast? And um, you'll be able to watch us on YouTube, but also listen to us. So however you prefer, we um, just hope you enjoy it. So let's get started. So Brockton to Beacon Hill, this is our first podcast, and we are just excited to be here. So I'm Rita Mendez, I'm your state representative, and um, tell them, Maddie, what are the ways that they can contact our office? So there are many ways to contact Rep. Mendez's office, the first being um, our office phone number, which is the first one, ending in 2400. You can also contact Rep. Mendez's through her cell phone, um, as well as email. Email is probably the best way. And then make sure to follow her on all of her social media accounts. The links are all there. Um, Instagram is State Rep Rita Mendez, as well as Facebook. And if you look up State Representative Rita Mendez on YouTube, that should come up as well. And her website is staterepmendez.com. And to sign up for her newsletter as well, you can visit her website, and it's just state rep, state rep mendez.com slash newsletter, but you'll be able to see it if you just get to the website. So the cell phone, which is the 508-577-0083, it's easier if you text me because mm -hmm. we do receive a lot of calls, and if you do call the state house phone number, which is the 617-722-2400, uh, most likely we'll go to an answering machine and then we have to check the messages because when we are in the building, we have meetings all day. So it's very rare when we're actually in the office. So if you call us on the State House phone number, expect a call back. Hopefully within 24 hours, we try to check our voicemail as uh, much as we can. So the best way, definitely send me a text message on my cell phone or email me at the State House uh, email address, which is the rita.mendes at mahouse.gov. And um, thank you so much. I am so honored that you've elected me to be your state representative. And um, you hired me in November, so now is my chance to come back to you and tell you all the fun, great stuff we're doing, the hard work we're doing at the State House. I feel like um, I have my law office 
and on a monthly basis we have our meetings and then that meeting is just to provide a report so what are the attorneys working on what types of cases what's happening uh, what needs to improve so this is my accountability to you so I want to just come let you know uh, some of the stuff that is happening and we did ask some of your questions we're going to be answering them today but I do want you to continue to send me your questions reach out let me know what you want to know more about what are the types of bills you want me to sponsor what are the types of bills you don't want me to sponsor what are uh, different legislature laws things that you want uh, to be changed that you want me to file that you want me to uh, advocate on behalf it's so much that we can do this together don't expect that you've elected me now I'm doing this on my own I count on each and one every one of you to come back and let's do this together I'm, I'm really working for you taking my votes for you so I'm excited to be here I'm happy to be your representative and I count on you so that we can continue this journey together and uh, I love this Bible verse, which is Hebrews 10, 24, that says, Let us think about each other and help each other to show love and do good deeds. We're really here to help one another to do good deeds. A lot of times we do things and um, we feel nobody is watching, so why do the right thing when no one is watching? We should still do them anyways because... It comes back to us, all the good things that we do. So we are here in this planet to do good, to show love, especially in this day and age when we're so tired of turning on the news and watching TV and just seeing a lot of bad things happening every day. But let's just continue to believe in humanity, believe that we can do good and that we are put here to do good to one another. So... Think about that and, and see what good deeds can you do today and what good deeds can you do tomorrow and just do small steps, small steps and you'll see the difference. You'll be a happier person. So keep on doing good deeds and um, good. Now, this is very important because we spend a lot of times um, trying to keep you updated. And it's very hard to um, know which ways that people are really receiving the message. But we have important message that we share. We do office hours pretty many on a mm -hmm. monthly basis. We have a lot of awesome office hours. And we post them on our social media. So how can they uh, follow me online on social media? Mm -hmm. So on Facebook, if you just search State Rep Rita Mendez, she should be the first one that comes up, hopefully. <laughs> and then she has the same username on Instagram as well, State Rep Rita Mendez. So follow her both on Facebook and Instagram. And then her website as well, StateRepMendez.com, to sign up for her newsletter that goes out every month about um, to stay updated on all of the events that she's doing, what she's done. Um, there's a ton of resources posted on her newsletter. Also, all of her contact information, how to contact me, anyone, any way that she can help you, as well as her YouTube, which we just started a couple weeks ago. So make sure to subscribe to, subscribe to that as well, our first episode of Cabo Vegan which we interviewed them as our first small business tour is up there. So make sure you uh, watch that and subscribe. And you can also find that on the Brockton Community Access YouTube as well. And we're tagged in there. Don't forget to subscribe. I want to make sure you're getting the information. So that is the fastest way for you to get uh, daily information of what is going on. So do go there right now and subscribe before you forget. Now... I am going to show you ways that you can officially contact me at the State House. So, Maddie, take it on. <laughs> so, to find Rep Mendez on the legislature website, um, all you have to do is actually, if you just type Rita Mendez into Google, it'll probably be the first thing that comes up. Um, and here you can see all the bills that she's sponsored, learn more about them, other co sponsors there. Um, our phone number and her office number are also listed there. So if you're ever in the state house 
and we're in there, feel free to come say hello. But yeah, that's the best way to find Brett Mendez. It's an open door policy, so come <laughs> in anytime. Our door's always open. <laughs> um, and the website is malegislator.gov. But like Maddie said, if you just put my name, Rina Mendez, on Google, it will come right up. So it's very easy. Uh, and yeah, absolutely. Definitely uh, look it up and look at the bills. Look at the bills I've co-sponsored. You can follow it. You can... How do they it, tag? Yeah, so talk. if you make an account on MA Legislature, you can actually star all the bills that you're interested in. So if you want to star all of Rep. Mendez's bills, you can get notifications about when uh, those bills are going into hearings. If you want to go to any of them, they're all public. So that's a good way to stay up to date with all of Rep. Mendez's bills, as well as any other bill that you may be interested in. If you make an account, you can star all of them on there. So welcome to Beacon Hill, which is the Massachusetts State House, and it's your house. So I'm here working for you, and I'm here to provide you information, but know that you're welcome to Beacon Hill. You're welcome to the State House. Anytime you want to come for a tour, definitely do that. It's a beautiful building, a lot of history. You'll definitely enjoy. You'll definitely learn a lot. So know that the Massachusetts State House is your house, and you're welcome to come Anytime that we're open, we're there, and uh, we love to see you. Every time when Brockton people come to the State House, they have to come by my office and take a picture with me. <laughs> so make sure you come to room 134 and take a picture, and let me know that you stop by the office, take a picture with us. It's always so much fun to have Brockton people at the State House. Now, we have a, a nice timeline, because people always complain that Everything at the state house takes so long. Why does the bill take so long to pass? Why nothing happens at the state house? So we have a little bit of a timeline. And um, you can explain, uh, Maddie, your amazing timeline and let <laughs> people know at what stage are we at mm -hmm. at this process at this moment. Yeah, so um, at this moment, we're currently in the budget to Senate stage but I'll start from the beginning. So on January 4th, all of the new reps were um, inaugurated. It was Rep. Mendez's first day on Beacon Hill, which was very exciting. Um, and then very quickly after that, she had to file all of her bills, which I wasn't there for that process. So she can actually touch base a little bit more on that subject. Um, and then March 1st, governors, the governor released her budget and following that, each representative met with the House Leads and Means Chair, Chair Michael Witz, to discuss each of their individual budget priorities. So Rep. Mendez sat down with Chair Michael Witz and discussed all of her priorities for Brockton and made sure that he knew what was going on in the city and how important all of Brockton's issues are. And then House Ways and Means released their budget on April 12th. And then we had three days to file any amendments for the budget. So anything that wasn't included in the House Ways and Means budget, we had to file an amendment to add it into um, that budget. And then debate began two weeks later on the 24th and lasted three days, which wasn't too bad um, for your first budget week. Um, and now, the after... The House passed the budget, it now goes off to the Senate, and then once the Senate passes the budget, it will go back to the governor's office. And I believe that the Senate starts, I think the week of the 24th is their budget debate. So, as you can see, it moves very quickly. When I first uh, joined on January 4th, I was told I had until January 20th to file the bills. So I went to ask the house clerk. It's actually a, a very short time for us to be filing all of our bills for two year session within two weeks. And then I was informed that uh, some time ago, the bills actually had to be filed by the last Thursday, I think of December, like the last week of December, 
before you took office in January. So I digressed and I didn't complain anymore. I was actually very glad and fortunate that we had a whole full two weeks of filing bills while learning the system, learning how to get around in the building because I got lost because they closed that entrance to where our lovely bullpen mm -hmm. was and you forgot to talk about the bullpen, mm -hmm. which was your favorite part of that <laughs> building. <laughs> <laughs> so our first office, I guess, I don't even know if I would call it an office. Folding um, table. Yeah, all the new reps are put in the bullpen, which this session it was in two separate hearing rooms. I think there were like maybe 10 or 11 reps in each room with all the aides. So there are about 20 of us in a pretty small room. Um, me and Rep Mendez sat at a folding table <laughs> as a shared desk. And we shared that room with, again, like 20 other people-ish. And it was extremely chaotic. It was never quiet, I don't think ever. And if it was quiet, like something was wrong, probably. There were always a million people coming in and out of the room, lobbyists, other reps, anyone to talk. They were just constant constant chaos in that place. Sad to go to leave my friends, but um, we did upgrade to a new office. Like Ratmanda said in room 134, please come visit us. Um, and we have nice big windows in the bullpen. We had no windows, no sunlight, <laughs> nothing. We were in the basement, so we definitely had a big upgrade. But our office has no doors, so open yeah. door policy. Come <laughs> in at any time. We'll remove all doors so you come right in and we're there. But it's a beautiful office. We have the beautiful mm -hmm. windows, beautiful view. It's a wonderful building. It's just amazing. But it's so quiet. It's very quiet in that office that we wonder why it's so quiet. <laughs> we had a loud bullpen for a whole three months. Mm -hmm. so. It was a big change. Big change. Yes, but we're happy to be all settled in. So, um, when we first decided to do this podcast, we were going to talk about the budget week. And then as we were preparing for uh, putting all the slides and the information, we quickly realized that what we passed in the House, it's not final yet. It's going to go to the Senate. And a lot of times that can get people confused because I am still going to share uh, some of the amazing stuff that we passed in the House budget. But no, it's not final. It's not final because it's still going to go to the Senate. So because of that, I am really just scratching the surface. I'm going to talk about some of the bills that I find it to be very important for the city of Brockton. Some of the things that I think you'll find it uh, important information. And then as it progresses, as the Senate releases their budget, as they come back with their recommendations, and there's certainly going to be differences between the Senate budget and the House budget. So then there's a joint committee that is going to be working through the differences until we have a final budget to send it over to the governor. And hopefully the governor will sign the budget and that will be the final document. And at that point, we're certainly coming back and then I can uh, provide more updated information with our final budget. So for today, just know that the things we're sharing, they're not final. They're still going through this process, but I still think it's uh, important to be uh, keeping you updated as we move along. So I want to talk about a bill that I did file that I think it's super amazing and it's regarding the Massasoit Community College Bill, which essentially what this bill says is um, House Docket Number 4054, which essentially just says that an act related to community college tuition for graduates of Brockton Public Schools. So if you attended uh, one of our public schools and you graduated from uh, the high school, the um, charter school, if you're a Brockton resident, you graduated from our public schools, then you would be able to attend Massasoit free of charge. So a lot of people uh, may ask the question, how are we going to be able to fund that? And that is a bill that I proposed. 
and it's currently pending. It's going to uh, get assigned to committee. It's going to have committee hearings. And then I'm talking about it now because I really think this is crucial for our students. Right now, if um, they the students are enrolled either at the charter school or at the Brockton High School, they're able to attend Massasoit's free of charge while they are still in high school. So this bill would allow an extension of that because I, when I went to high school, I was also working full time at Dunkin Donuts and I would get home very late and be in school in the morning. So not for everybody, they're able to do this dual program where they're able to attend high school and also attend college classes. It's a phenomenal program. It's a great program. It allows uh, our kids to be able to get college credits free of charge. But then uh, once they graduate, then that no longer applies. So if they want to attend Massasoit after graduation, then they would have to pay. So this would allow an extension. So after they graduate, they would still be able to attend Massasoit free of charge. And I need all of you that are listening, whether you have kids in school, whether you live in Brockton, whether you uh, really think this is important, when this bill comes up for a hearing, I need you to sign up and I need you to come and speak in favor. We need a lot of people to get behind this so we can build up that momentum and that support on Beacon Hill and push this because our kids, our students really need this to pass. So I ask for your support and I'm definitely going to be providing more information as we move things along. The question is, how are we going to pay for this? And um, I happen to have an answer. Um, last year, remember when uh, we passed the fair share constitutional amendment? That uh, fair share amendment, it's uh, estimated that it would be bringing in approximately one billion in additional investments. And that would be going towards education and transportation. Today we're not going to be talking about the transportation part of it because it's also another big investment, a big topic, and uh, we wanted to keep this short, concise, so we're talking about uh, some of the proposals for that fair share amendment for the education piece of it. So the governor already introduced, put in her budget, and that did pass in the House budget, the Mass Reconnect program. The Mass Reconnect program really is for uh, people that are 25 years of age and older, that they would be able to attend not just Massasoit, but community college free of charge. And that is uh, an intention to uh, bring back the workforce, making sure that people that try to attend community college, community um, schools and uh, life happened, dropped out, couldn't afford, now they're having that second chance in life at 25 years of age or older to be able to attend uh, the community schools like Massasoit and uh, other community college out there. So that's super amazing. Um, we do think that that will pass. That was in the house um, budget. And uh, we're looking to extend that for uh, Brockton kids so that they don't have to wait until they're 25 or older to be able to attend Massasoit free of charge, but they can just move it along right out of um, high school. And we know that a lot of our kids, the English is not their first language. A lot of times their parents never attended um, college or any uh, higher education. So this is a great opportunity for them to be able to take on that opportunity. So for our Brockton kids, Brockton schools, that would be uh, a game changer for our city. So I ask for your support uh, for the bill and also keep uh, following up and I'll be um, giving you more information regarding the Mass Reconnect program, which is for the students 25 years of age and older to be able to attend a community college uh, free of charge. So more updates on that. And um, also other fair share amendments uh, success that we do think it's super amazing, super important 
and long overdue. This uh, really should have happened a long time ago, but during the pandemic, this program was implemented and it was so successful. It was so important, so instrumental for our kids that now it became permanent. So it's the universal school meals, which requires public schools to provide universal school meals to all students free of charge. And um, since this program has been implemented, more than 80,000 students have eaten, eaten lunch daily in schools. And um, this helps to decrease the stigma. So that way parents, they don't have to fill up any forms. They don't have to be approved. They don't have to be some pay, others don't pay. So if you don't pay, it means you're poor. And if you do pay, it means that you have better means financial. That takes away all of that. So all kids are the same. All kids, they are entitled to just have free school meals. That is the longer we do, and I'm happy that we were able to pass that in the house budget. And that saves a household approximately $1,200 per child per year. So it's a huge savings. Happy to see that becoming permanent. Another thing that um, the fair share amendment is able to provide is um, the Green School Works program. So that's it. According to um, this program, that's it must, it's the Department of Education, must establish a competitive grant program for public schools to apply for projects related to installation and maintenance of clean energy infrastructure. So this is um, a great program because we want to make sure that we see uh, clean energy being installed and maintenance and this is where our school is heading, so that is amazing. So some of the fair share amendment is also going to that uh, in relation to education. Now, meet the beautiful kids of um, South Middle School. We have been doing, tell them a little bit about this, Maddie, of our tours that we've been doing um, at our schools, and it's been fun. So. So, Rep Mendez has started touring all of the Brockton Public Schools that are in her district. I think there's about 10 of them. Um, and these are the kids from South Middle School who are so excited to meet with her. They're all taking selfies. Very excited to meet her. Um, but it's been great uh, from the schools that she's been to so far. The kids have been very excited to see her and it's great to you know, get to tour all the schools, hear from the teachers, hear from the students, just about what's going on there, make sure that Rep Mendez is in the loop and she's there as a resource for them, um, just as well as, you know, connecting with the community. But when I did go to South Meadow School, you know what was that they asked and what they said that they did not want? And they were very adamant about this. And I, they, they weren't easy. They were tough kids and a lot of them and just one of me. So yes, I was outnumbered by them. So. <laughs> <laughs> they all said that they want a new high school. They don't want to go uh, to an old um, Brockton High School. And we do know that Brockton High School is being renovated. But the reality is we've tried to apply uh, for grants to renovate the high school. I think it was for three times and um, it was denied the first time, the second time, and then it was finally approved, but it is a process. And a lot of our schools does require uh, major renovations. So I'm also happy to uh, inform that um, we're also providing um, additional funding for the Massachusetts School, school Building Authority which increases the limit on the amount of grants approved by the Massachusetts School Building Authority. It increases the limit from $800 million to $1.1 billion, essentially increases $300 million increase in the House budget, which these grants are for school buildings construction and renovation projects. So kids, I cannot promise, but hopefully by the time you get to attend high school, the building will be looking beautiful and we know a lot of our schools desperately need this money this grant and desperately need to go through major renovations so we're working on it but 
that was interesting how they all all were really adamant that they wanted a new high school so we're working towards but it's exciting to announce that we're putting more funding because we do recognize across the state lots of um, public schools do need uh, additional money for renovations now excited also to um, announce that some of my amendments did pass in the house budget and it's exciting because I'm, I'm, I know there's a lot of work that we need to do in Brockton and definitely um, need to, our goal is to be fighting to bring funding and money to our city. And it's hard at the beginning when everybody is also trying to bring funding for their district. But I'm happy to announce that we were able to uh, pass in the House budget. Remember, it's not final. It goes to the Senate. Hopefully, these numbers will increase in the Senate. But until the budget is finalized, we were, we're just providing information. But remember, we're coming back once it becomes final. But at this point, um, some of my amendments did pass in the House. And $50,000 for the Cape Burden Association. This is for the domestic violence outreach program, which is so essential. Especially during the pandemic, we saw that um, a lot of our communities and households, a lot of domestic violence really increased, unfortunately. And now this really uh, is a way to let people know there's help, let people know assistance and programs. So it's vital, it's crucial. And we know how it is. And I'm, I'm just uh, looking forward to see all the amazing things that the Cape Verdean Association will continue to do uh, as this program just keeps on increasing and happy to be a part of it, happy to bring some funding for that. Also, $25,000 is going to the Haitian Community Partners. They have amazing programs for ESL uh, naturalizations and really provided crucial information to the community. So happy that they're also getting the $25,000 towards their program that goes towards staffing, making sure they have the people to continue to run uh, the organization. Just uh, happy to support, happy to see some money going towards them and also advocating because Senator Mike Brady did tell them at their gala that he was also fighting to get some money. So Senator Mike Brady, we're looking for you to get some more money for the Haitian Community Partners, Cape Verdean Association in our community. We thank you so much for all the phenomenal work that you do. But just shout out for Senator Mike Brady there. <laughs> Also, as you can see, the William O'Malley building really needs a tremendous facade improvements. Uh, and that is for the Registry of Deeds, Belmont Street. So it's a matching fund, so it's $25,000 going towards that. And the Plymouth County is matching the funds. They do need a lot more money. So we're also counting on Senator Mike Brady. It's also a nice, another pitch for you to make sure you, you try to get us more money so we can see the beautiful building that definitely needs um, the facade and, and improvements and looking beautiful and making our city look beautiful. Happy to announce all these great things. Maddie, tell them the committee assignments that I got. So, Rep. Mendez was assigned to four committees, the first being Judiciary, um, which she was very excited about, as well as Bonding, Capital Expenditures, and State Assets, the Children, Families, and Persons with Disabilities Committee, and her favorite one, Advanced IT, Internet, and Cybersecurity, because she says that she knows so much about this topic. Guess what we talked about in our hearing when it comes to advanced IT, internet, and cybersecurity. <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> AI. Does it sound <laughs> familiar? I couldn't believe. I was like, wow, this is mind-blowing. So it's exciting. Yes, I, I guess we all know a little bit about that. So, um, yeah, I 
been fun, been interesting, but as we're talking about committee assignments, let me talk about something that is very crucial, important that is happening. We are doing the firearm safety listening tour. And um, there's a schedule, we're going across the state and we're having these listening tours. We're hearing from the community. So I know what you may think. You may think we're not Texas, we're not these other states. The gun laws in Massachusetts are very strict, one of the toughest in the country. Why should we do anything different? I wanna hear from you. What do you think? Is it good enough? Do you think it needs some more improvements? What about ghost guns? What about other things? I do know that unfortunately in the city of Brockton and also across the state and our communities, we do see that we were talking about the domestic violence. We do see that this, this unfortunately incidents that that happens and people do still get uh, killed because illegal guns or whatever the case may be. So we're not really completely just saying that we can get complacent and other states have a lot more work than we do and there's nothing that we can do because I do think there's definitely um, more things that we can do. So this is your chance. Tell us your story. Tell us your experiences. What do you think? Uh, what are the changes that you feel? You know how to reach me. Definitely send me an email. We're doing these listening tours. We are definitely doing one in Brockton, which by the time you listen to this, unfortunately, it will have passed, but we are getting it recorded with BCA, so you'll be able to go back and watch that. But we're going to Brockton, Lowell, um, Boston, Framingham, New Bedford, Lawrence, Springfield. So we're going to all these different communities that we feel has been impacted by gun violence. So I want to hear from you. Let us know what you think. Let us know. Um, just, just keep being informed. This is really your time. Listening to us. We want to hear from the public, from the community. And uh, we know we do the yearly peace walk. Uh, here in the city of Brockton, which happens to be on Father's Day with um, Sharon Baker, and and we share our stories there. So there's people that have been affected by gun violence. We want to hear from you. Definitely send us your information. Definitely keep us posted. This is your time to really let us know what you think. Now, this is your favorite part, Maddie. So, uh, Rep Mendez had this fabulous idea, probably about two months ago now, that she wants to go around to all a bunch of local small businesses in Brockton, whether it be restaurants, hair salons, any anything, any small business, um, and interview the owners, get to taste the food, um, and just hear their story. So our first stop was Cabo Vegan. And they were awesome. They actually helped us set up the camera on the first day. But we got to try their lobster roll and I believe it was a tuna sandwich, which were both delicious. Neither Rep Mendez or I are vegan. So we were very intrigued about the food. But it was great to hear their story and just learn more about veganism and hear about their business. So hopefully... Um, some of you will reach out to us about maybe coming to your restaurant or your business and interviewing you. If you'd like to be featured, it's on Rep Mendez's YouTube where you can watch the full interview and see us even try the food with our live reactions. <laughs> also, we're also looking for volunteers. Mm -hmm. So if you like the camera, if you like filming, being behind um, the stage, the screen and the cameras, <laughs> definitely, definitely reach out. It's um, important um, to just have people. So if you want to help out and volunteer, definitely come. And make sure you do go to that YouTube channel, which we just set it up, uh, and, and subscribe. Because that way you'll be able to get the podcasts when they come out. You'll be able to get uh, videos when we go to the businesses. You'll be able to really um, be alerted, informed. Uh, You'll be notified whenever notified. anything is published. <laughs> yes. Thank
there you go. That's a, <laughs> so definitely um, do that. Subscribe today and go watch the um, first episode, which is the Cabo Vegan episode. And let us know, have you ever tried vegan food? Do you like it? Do you know they actually tricked us because they were not lobster and they were not <laughs> tuna. They were chickpea and palm. Hearts of palm. Hearts of palm. Yes, we were tricked. I know. We were told that. <laughs> um, but it did look like lobster. It looked like tuna. But yes, definitely go there. Definitely check us out. Definitely subscribe and come help us. We need help uh, with some camera savvy people, editing, all that fun stuff. Come help us. And you get to hang out with Rep Mendez for the day. It would be like a field trip. You'll love it. <laughs> You'll have so much fun. Speaking about um, the Cabo Vegan and our business tours that we're doing, I like to talk about two uh, very important bills that we have pending at the State House, and uh, they kind of go together. So the first one is actually um, H410, which is an act relative to the development of the Massachusetts Office of the Micro and Minority Owned Business. And all of that really is, all that really says, we're codifying micro and minority businesses. And that means that when we talked about small businesses, it really uh, can go from one person up to, um, I believe it goes like 25 or it really is a lot more and then it, it goes up to two and 2.5 million that they'll make. So it really is a huge gap. So this is codifying the micro businesses and micro businesses is what we have in the city of Brockton, which is up to 10 employees and um, the profit per year and that is in profit up to $250,000, which that would just be Codifying. Why is that important that we're doing that and we're making our laws recognize that our small businesses is not really a small business, it's a micro business. Because when we had the pandemic and we had all the grants and all the benefits that was going to small businesses, the bigger small businesses, if that even making sense, but the businesses that uh, were more organized, they had their own CPA, they had their accountant, they had their lawyers, they had uh, uh, the bookkeeper, they had the books and everything all in order, they were able to show right away uh, that they needed the funds and they were able to get the funds right away. So they got the benefits, which was great, it was okay. But what happened was the micro businesses, which is that sole proprietor, the mom and, and dad, the shops and the small ones, the, the ones that here in our communities, they did not have their books in order. They didn't really qualify uh, at first for a lot of these grants and benefits because they were just trying to run their business. They were trying to do the books. They were trying to do their taxes. They were trying to do their payroll. They were just trying to do everything and it was just a mess unorganized and they a lot of times were left out of um, these benefits so by we doing that and making it a separate category then there's going to be money directly to these types of businesses the micro businesses and that is why it's important to codify them so the h410 is just that Codification is just putting into law the definition of micro businesses. And then the next bill, which is H 2811, which is an act to establish the micro business employee training and workforce development program. So after we codified, after we created the micro business definitions, then how can we help them? How can we help them uh, just uh, continue to grow and thrive? So it creates, uh, according to this bill, it creates an incentive program for micro businesses with no more than 10 employees and the profit per year, no more than 250,000 in profit to hire recently incarcerated individuals and individuals receiving traditional assistance. So that way they'll be able to have incentives for people that are gonna be hiring uh, those who uh, left the jail system for the past five years 
and also people who are receiving um, transitional assistance. So it would provide a 2,000 credit per person per year for up to 10 years of continuous employment and then establishes a five-year grant program for these businesses who qualify for credit to give additional support. So very important and this would really be a game changer in the city of Brockton for our micro businesses. They're actually micro businesses. They're not really in that category of small businesses because they are micro and we want to see this these two bills passed. So when there's going to be hearings on them, same step, same process. I will be reaching out and hopefully you'll sign up and show your support and I've co-sponsored both of them and these were filed by Representative Carlos Gonzalez. So proud of him and looking forward to see them pass. Office hours, Maddie, these are your favorite. So, uh, Rep Mendez has been hosting office hours um, a few times a month, all at different locations. So we've gone to the Council on Aging, which is actually now at the Shaw's Center since they are under renovations. Um, we've gone to the library and then all of the high rises, which those are kind of private office hours just for the residents at those buildings, um, just making it more accessible for them going right to their building. Um, but it's great because Rep. Mendez's constituents get to meet with her. They've asked a lot of great questions. Um, we get to help them with anything that they might need assistance with, uh, especially from they have an application or a pending application with a state department or for housing, that's mostly what I do. So I can help them a lot with that and just make sure that they have all the correct information filled out and all the steps completed. And then I can call the state department and make sure all is good on their end. And then it's kind of just a waiting game from there, depending on what situation they're dealing with. But the office hours have been fantastic. Um, we have pizza, we talk, we chat, <laughs> they're, they're great. We have Paolo's famous mm -hmm. cheese bread. You have to tell them who Paolo is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My husband, yeah, I, got, I put him to uh, do, I, no, I don't do well in the kitchen, so. Yes, we, do you have to come and try it out, the cheese mm -hmm. bread? They can't be giving you all that information. You mm -hmm. have to come and try it for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's been very successful, very popular. People love it. Now, I'm happy to um, inform that for the first time ever, a representative from Brockton has been able to join the Massachusetts Black and Latino Caucus. Why is that important? We um, are meeting with the governor at first, uh, previous sessions, the Massachusetts, uh, the Black and Latino Caucus met with the governor on a quarterly basis. So we proposed that to uh, Governor Mara Healy to continue to do so in meeting on a quarterly basis. And she immediately said, why can't we do this monthly? I figure there's a lot of important issues that we need to address so monthly would make more sense. So now we meet as a caucus with the governor on a monthly basis and that is um, crucial because we can talk about the micro businesses, we can talk about the free community colleges, we can talk about things that directly affect our community, our Brockton community. So I'm just happy to be part of it. And one of the great things that we did um, last month, time is flying, the month of April, on April 14, I believe that mm -hmm. was, yes, um, we had an amazing event, which was Black Excellence on the Hill, which was held in um, at the State House. The Black and Latino Caucus put it together, and we were recognizing the amazing people in our community that are making a difference every day. So shout out to my good friend Marlene Amidi. She is from the Haitian Community Partners, a true Brocktonian. She now lives in Halifax but she's been in Brockton for, I don't know, 20 plus years. And she was recognized by Representative Kathy Lanatra from Plymouth and all of the amazing work she does in the community. So I really just wanna congratulate Marlene and just say that 
She's absolutely phenomenal and keep doing the great work. And we're going to continue to work together with the Haitian community. And she's also a member of the Cape Verdean Association board. So she's also involved with the Cape Verdeans, with the Brazilians, with the Haitians, with the immigrant population in the city of Brockton in general. Whoever needs help, Marlene is there to help. And what better person to be recognized, to be nominated, to have received this um, major recognition uh, at the State House. So congratulations. And I had um, the phenomenal opportunity to recognize Leander Montedo. And uh, what is so special uh, about Leandra is the fact that she is so active in her community. She does absolutely everything that you can possibly think, but she doesn't do it for the cameras. She does behind the scenes. She does uh, not to get the recognition. She does only because she wants to help her community. And that is really special. So when the pandemic hit and everything closed and a lot of nonprofit uh, organizations moved all their programs via Zoom, virtually, you know what Leandra was doing? She was there at the Cape Verdean Association helping people in person, filling up applications. If people are going through housing evictions, she's helping them filling up the raft applications, making sure people are not getting evicted. If there's a child custody case, she's there helping the community. She's also a mentor to a lot of our kids because she runs the summer program and she is um, in charge of uh, helping the kids uh, during the summer. They do, it's the YEP program, YEP Weekend. They do an amazing program. They had like a prom-like event last year. They all dressed up and they're all so cute. And we got to see them. She also helps the kids after school with their homework. If there's someone in our community that is working every day for the city of Brockton to help the city of Brockton improve people's lives every day, that is Leandra Montero. You deserve the Black Excellence on the Hill, this award. What you received, it's just the beginning because she wants to be a police officer. She's currently a Massasoit. She's a true Brocktonian, and we're just so proud of you, Leandra. Congratulations on your recognition, and I'm just so happy that I was the one who nominated you and that you received this amazing, amazing award, amazing recognition, being that Black Excellence on the Hill. So shout out to Leandra, so proud of you. Newsletters, Maddie, this is also your favorite part. So, as we've touched on a little bit um, earlier, we have a monthly newsletter. It goes out uh, kind of on a monthly basis, maybe every four to six weeks is <laughs> a better way to put it, uh, depending on how busy we are. But, so to, to subscribe, um, visit statereptmendez.com and hit the newsletter section and you'll be able to subscribe right there. You can also leave a comment if you have any questions, feel free to include that there. Um, but this newsletter is pretty much just a summary of all of the events and amazing work that Ron Mendez has done in that month. And it goes directly to you just so you know what she's doing on Beacon Hill, you know what she's doing in Brockton, how to be involved, um, stay connected with her, any events that she may be going to or whatnot, um, the newsletter is a great way to stay updated just on what's going on. So make sure to subscribe at stateropmendez.com. And then we do have a few questions um, that people had submitted either through Facebook or Instagram, or you can email us at socialmediarepmendez um, at gmail.com if you would like to submit any more questions for our next podcast. So the first one is from Dia Linda, and she asks, Mrs. Mendez, the increase in household income is a big problem in our city. Houses without minimal qualification conditions, what Mrs. Mendez intends to do to help those who are low income, once they ask for support, they ask for proof of low income and do not give a timely response and many owners do not cooperate with the tenant at the level of necessary documents. 
That is a phenomenal question, and it's a huge question, but uh, I'm going to try to keep this simple. We definitely knew that housing was going to be a question asked because it's just a major issue now across the state, and I'm just so happy that the governor is taking that seriously, and we are doing all that we can to address the housing concerns, housing issues. But I am happy to say that also in our house budget, remember, it goes to the Senate, then it comes back, and then goes to the governor until we get prime final approval. But for now, it did pass on the house budget, which is the eviction protections for renters. And um, it makes permanent protections for renters with pending applications for emergency rental assistance, which means that if you have a pending application, then they cannot evict you while that application is pending. So it allows an opportunity for the people to have a chance and to go through the hearings and hopefully uh, get approved. And that way they don't have to be, it's cheaper for us to keep people in their homes. So we'll do everything that we can to keep uh, people in their homes. So there's an action for summary process for non-payment of rent. A court cannot enter a judgment or issue an execution before application for emergency rental assistance has been approved or denied. Must issue a state of that execution on a judgment for possession under certain circumstances. Must grant a continuance if tenancy is being terminated for non-payment of rent, non-payment of rent was due to financial hardship, pending application for a rental assistance. So, this is uh, the emergency rental assistance is considered financial assistance for a residential tenant to prevent an eviction or homelessness under RAPT or any other program. So a municipality or a nonprofit entity. So if there's a pending application, you won't get evicted until you have a chance to go through your process. So that's good news, at least for now. There's so much more we, we need to be doing, but that's a great question. Thank you, dear Linda, for sending in questions. You're always amazing. And the next question is from Laura, and she says, hi, this is a refreshing idea. My question would be, is the city able to enact an ordinance or law to prohibit panhandling? So Laura, Thank you so much for your question. I have some news for you. We actually, the city of Brockton did have at some point the panhandling ordinance, and then we had to repeal it, the city council. And the reason for that is because the Massachusetts Supreme Court ruled unconstitutional uh, the Fall River because Fall River had the similar panhandling law as the city of Brockton. So it, it ruled unconstitutional because it violates free speech, which essentially uh, what the law was doing was that anyone within 25 feet of an ATM or a bank that they were asking for money, they were panhandling, then they would be penalized with the fine of up to $200. So we had it uh, at some point in our books and then we had to repeal it because it was unconstitutional. ACLU did sue the city of uh, Fall River and said that if the city of Brockton didn't repeal this ordinance, that city of Brockton was gonna be next, that they were going to sue also the city of Brockton. So Massachusetts Supreme Court found it to be unconstitutional because it violates free speech, and now we no longer have that laws in the books. Maybe sometime in the future we could go back and look and see how we can help the homeless population. We've had an amazing ground bake breaking on Manlin Street, which is 124 Manlin Street, which is the wraparound services for uh, the homeless population. And that is going to be hopefully uh, the grand opening in 2024, next year. And that's going to also provide 32 apartments for people to be able to live. I know we need a lot more, but 32 is a great start. And it's going to be wraparound services, which means that they do not have to leave at seven o'clock in the, in the morning and be wandering in our streets. They can stay there, they can get help, they can get assistance. And I am looking forward to that. But there's so much more that we can do to help our homeless populations. Thank you for your questions. That was amazing. And um, I hope that 
you are able to really keep us sending us questions. We do this to you, so I want to know what you think. And um, I hope you had fun. And this was so much fun. Thank you so much. Keep reaching us out. Keep sending your questions, your emails. Let us know how we did. And uh, we're here. It helps me prepare for our next podcast. So your questions will actually guide what I'm going to be coming and presenting to you next. So keep them coming. They're always amazing. And I hope that I know it's a lot of information, but I hope that it was easy to understand, that it made sense. Do you have some idea what we do at the State House? I hope we had some fun. We did. Say goodbye, Maddie. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you next time.